praise the Lord. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Wherever you may be, happy birthday to my mom back in Detroit and my mommy in New Jersey, my other mom in Minnesota, and my mother-in-law in Texas. Man, to all the mothers and to my beautiful wife sitting here, happy Mother's Day. Amen. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to pray and then we'll, we're going to get right into this and uh, we're going to make it quick because I know some, some folks want to get out and uh, get to the Ponderosa, uh, get out and have dinner or whatever it is that you do. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for this day. Thank you that your word goes forth with boldness, simplicity, and power that ministers grace to the hearers. Lord, that it um, fills us up in such a way, Lord, that we not only are blessed by hearing it, but we are also able to share it with others with the same boldness, power, and simplicity. Lord, that someone else will be blessed and someone else will come to know you and love you as we do. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, one of the most important things that any believer is ever going to have to deal with is understanding who you are in Christ. Identity is probably the single most important concept that needs to be grasped in the body of Christ. And if we don't have it, uh, we are basically children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. It's important that we know who we are. And I want to uh, deal with a passage of scripture where Jesus asked the question or he asked two questions he said who do people say that I am and then he asked a second question who do you say I am so I want to go uh, to the uh, to the Word of God and um, and pull this up and if you have your Bibles, if you turn to Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. Matthew 16, 13 through 18. And I'm reading from the Amplified. And it says, Now when Jesus went into the region, the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they answered, Some say John the Baptist, Others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you yourselves say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus answered him, blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, that is, men, have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, that is, a rock, a small rock. And I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, the powers, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it or be strong to, the, to its detriment or hold out against it. Uh, I want to um, focus on a couple of things here just before we really dive into today's message. One is that when he says, upon this rock, he's not talking about Peter. Peter is not the rock the church is built upon. The, what the church is built upon is the truth of what Peter said, that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. That's number one. And the second thing is that church does not refer to buildings. It does not refer to denominations. It does not refer to gatherings. The word church in this context is ecclesia. Ecclesia is a word for government, governing authority. It is the same word that the Greek and Roman legislative bodies called themselves, the ecclesia. Amen? So we're not talking about buildings. We're not talking about denominations. We're not talking about gatherings. We're talking about God's representative government on earth. Amen? So here's the thing about um, identity. And, and this holds a, a certain significance for Mother's Day because mothers have a key part 
and understanding earthly identity. Now, let me just kind of talk about myself for a minute because when I grew up, I was an awkward child. And by awkward, I mean I really didn't have a, a good grasp on my identity. Uh, my father wasn't there with me when I was growing up, uh, so I didn't have a whole lot of connection to the day family or day men. I didn't have a standard by which I could judge myself against uh, regarding them. And even though I had uh, I had good men around me in the Stoudemire family and some good men uh, around me in my neighborhood uh, that I grew up with, uh, these men, I, I, I saw differences between myself and them. Even though they were good men, they were men to be honored, men to be uh, emulated, uh, but they were not anyone that I could really identify with. They didn't have my same characteristics. There were some things in their nature and their character that I just couldn't identify with. And so because of this, I suffered from what is called an identity crisis. I was confused. Now don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that I was confused in any in, in any weird way or anything like that. I mean, I know that I was that I was a man. I was made to be a man, and all of that. Uh, that's that's not my point. That I didn't understand what I was supposed to walk like, what I was supposed to talk like. Uh, what I was supposed to be interested in. And, and so my mother, she had a simple remedy for that. She would simply say, be yourself. Be yourself. Well, be yourself is easier said than done when you don't know who yourself is. And that was my problem. And unfortunately, that's uh, the problem of a lot of the church today is that we don't know who we are. We have an identity crisis. So I learned a valuable lesson in my struggle. And, and this, is, this really helped me out. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and it was this, that I could allow myself to be shaped by my struggle, by my circumstances, by my situations, or I could use those circumstances and situations to shape myself. And this is the difference between conformity and transformation, because I could have easily conformed to whatever everybody else's ideal of what a man should be or what I should be interested in or the things that I should do, but I, I began to look beyond my circumstances to see something greater. So that, when, uh, when I began to uh, grow in ministry and grow in my walk in Christ, that helped me to understand a key passage of scripture that, that, that's really relevant to all of us, and that's Romans 12 and 2, to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove that which is the good, the perfect, and the acceptable will of God. So in my own experience, it helped prepare me to understand this and to be able to explain it in a practical way that people are able to use it. So fast forward, when I began to develop a relationship with my Heavenly Father through Christ Jesus, I, I learned something that was even more important. Something that was more important, and, it, and it's this, that it wasn't what my teachers said about me. It wasn't what my relatives said about me. It wasn't what my neighbors said about me. It wasn't what my military leaders said about me. It wasn't what my college professors said about me. It was what I said about me. But here's the catch. If I simply say what I think about me without a yardstick to judge it by, I'm, I may be guilty of lying to myself. And here's where the rubber meets the road. 
because it what this is what this walk in Christ is all about what identity is all about is very simple is agreeing with what God says about you see here's the thing when, when you begin to make your words line up with God's words power is released because see the thing is when God spoke into the world and created things when he spoke into the world and changed things when he spoke into the world and sent Jesus into the world he used words though the words were the containers by which the delivery of his power was made so likewise we're created in his image and his likeness to speak the same kind of words but our words in and of themselves have no power However, when we plug into the power supply of his word and align our words with his words, then our words release the same kind of power. Are you with me? That is so important because, and you cannot get to that without understanding identity. If you don't know who you are and whose you are, look here, let me tell you something. The, the, here's the difference between every religion and Christianity. And it's this. In Christianity, or, or in, in every other religion, you may believe that there is a supreme being. And you may believe this supreme being is worthy to be worshipped. You may believe that this supreme being is worthy to be obeyed. You may believe these things, but all you are doing is you, you are obeying because of the fear of consequences. The difference between every other religion and Christianity is that not only is it all about what what God being the object of everything or Jesus being the object of everything, but it's what he says about us. What he says about us. And, and, and let, let's, let's talk about this for a minute. There, there, there are things that you need to know. You are loved. John 3, 16. You are saved. Romans 10, 9. You know, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You're delivered, Luke 11 and 14. You're healed, 1 Peter 2 and 24. You are prospered, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. You are protected, John 16 and 33. These are things that God has, says, has said about you. Now, this is the thing I get in trouble with, with, uh, with, with preaching folks and church folks all the time about this because they tell me, they say, well, day you just don't have any humility. You just think way too highly of yourself. You're too puffed up in what you think you know. I've been told stuff like that. But my retort to that is that true humility is not self-deprecation. It's not saying that I'm a wretch. It's not saying that I'm a worm. It's not saying that I'm unworthy. It's not saying that I'm a sinner. It's not saying any of those things because God didn't say any of those things about me. So if I say something that is contrary to what God says about me, I'm lying. I am a liar. And lying is an abomination unto God. Stay tuned for more on that. So true humility is being in agreement with what God says about you. Look here, let me tell y'all something because this will help you. This will help you. This, I promise you this will help you. My young people back in the back, this is going to help you. Because here's the deal. What other people say about you and what other people think about you is not your business. That ain't your business. It ain't your concern. It has nothing to do with you. What somebody else thinks about you, what somebody else says about you means absolutely nothing because somebody else is saying something about you that says that you're great. Every time I send my kids off to school, I tell them two words in, in parting. Be great. Be great. And I tell them to be great because they are great. 
I'm not telling them to be something that they're not. I'm just reinforcing what's already in them. And I'm telling them that because God tells them that. They need to know that that's what God thinks about them. And so when you believe internally, when you get it down in your spirit, that this is what God says about me, this is what God believes about me, this is what God feels about me, it changes your whole way of thinking. You're no longer walking stooped down, head down, depressed, dejected. You're holding your head up. You're holding your chest up. You're throwing your shoulders back. You're standing tall. You're standing proud because you know that your daddy in heaven loves you and that he has a plan for you. And his plan for you is to prosper you and to bring you to an expected end. His plan for you is for you to be healed. His plan for you is to be whole. His plan for you is to be connected to him eternally. You know, and I, I, I want everybody to know this is that, see, here's the thing. We're, we're, Christianity is not religion. It's not another religion. It's, it, it's, it's a way of life. It's, uh, it, it's a lifestyle. It's a, uh, it's a state of being. It, it, it's like it's, it's going from being natural to being supernatural. It's, it's something truly extraordinary. And the thing is, is that you cannot get to that destination mentally, spiritually, physically, or emotionally through religion. You have to have a relationship with God. You can't understand who you are in the natural unless you have a relationship with somebody in the natural who is able to pour something into your life to, to give you a sense of belonging. Because if you don't have that in the natural, it's, it, it, see, if you don't have a relationship with God and all you have is something in the natural, then you're waiting for somebody to pour something into your life. And if it never happens, you wind up having a vacant life. You're, you're, there's a hole in your heart, a hole in your spirit. And when that hole is in your spirit, you're looking for ways to fill it. And that's where your spirit man then begins to get into trouble because it's not connected to anything. And nature abhors a vacuum. Where something is, is missing, something else will rush in to fill the void. Amen to that. Now, you know, this is, you know, religion will wear you out and tear you down. It'll put you on the treadmill and, and you'll, you'll, be, you'll be on it with works and trying to uphold the law and trying to follow the Ten Commandments and trying to follow the rest of the law and you'll say, well, I ain't gonna eat pork and I ain't gonna eat shellfish and I, I, I'm, I'm gonna observe the Sabbath and you're gonna go through all these motions and you will never get any closer to God because all you have is religion. But relationship with God, with our Heavenly Daddy, through Jesus will refresh you, it'll revive you, restore you, and it'll even resurrect you. Good God Almighty. I mean, where you are like literally raised from the dead. And some of us had the influence of great parents growing up, and some of us had a great environment. Uh, I'm not that guy. You know, I, I love my mother. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I want to say this for all the world to hear that my mother did the best that she could with what she had. She wasn't dealt the best hand, but she played it the best she could. So I'm not, I'm not saying anything to, to fault her. But the thing is, is that I, I, ideally I didn't have, you know, both parents at home. We didn't live in a great neighborhood. We didn't have the great schools. We didn't have all of the, all of the things, you know, uh, that, that uh, a, a lot of nuclear families have. We didn't have that. But my mom did the best that she could with what she had. And, and I'm gonna tell you something, this is what I want you to understand is that even if, even if you didn't have the best coming up, even if you didn't have mama and daddy coming up, even if you grew up in the ghetto or if you grew up in the dirt country, even if it doesn't matter because see there, there is the now. 
And in the now, you can either know Jesus or you can get to know him. And once you know him or get to know him, it will change your now, which is the only thing that will re that will shape your future because your past is powerless. Your past can only shape your future to the extent that you will allow it to impact your now. And, and the beautiful thing is that when you become a Christian, when you are born again, it says, Behold, all things, all, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. That you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. That you are something that didn't exist before. You're something brand new. You're right now, your immediate time in space has been forever altered, which means that your future has been completely reshaped in a positive way. And this is the good news is that Jesus will heal your wounds. He'll fix your cracks. He'll mend your breaks and he will fill your holes. And Jesus was telling his disciples that what men thought about him was not important. But what they thought about him made all the difference. And I'm here to tell you today that what people say about you, because see, here's the thing, people, and, and um, God help me, that the closer you become to God, the more understanding of who you are in him, the more people are going to try to beat you down, that they are going to try to take you out of your place of, of joy. That they're going to try to upset your happiness. That they're going to try and take away what you have. But if you understand who you are and whose you are and what he says about you and that what he says about you trumps everything else that everybody else says about you, you will walk in victory. You will walk in victory. You know, you, you, listen, today is Mother's Day, and, and, and I thank God for all the mothers, good, bad, and indifferent. And, and, and here's the thing, for mothers, and this is for fathers too, that today is the day that you can reshape your destiny. That if you don't know Jesus today, that you can know him. And it's simply calling out on his name. It says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You don't have to recite a sinner's prayer. You don't have to have somebody lay hands on you. You don't have to have an altar call. You don't need any of that. You can get saved anywhere. But you can reshape your today, which will reshape your future. And, and, and don't, listen, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. There is no condemnation. There is no, well, you know, you did, you did something wrong. You did something bad. No, listen, but when you, when you walk in Christ, you walk in newness. That all of that is passed away. All of that is passed away. This is a new day, a new opportunity, a new chance, a new beginning. And it's an opportunity to change. And not only, to, not only to change yourself, but to change your environment. Change your environment, you change your family. Change your family, you change your community. Change your community, you change your city. Change your city, you change your state. Change your state, you change your nation. Change your nation, and you'll change the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and, and that, that's the power of identity. And mothers, I want y'all to get that. Fathers, sons, daughters, too. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Love you. Told you it was going to be quick. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. I wasn't kidding. God, God is good. That was